Now to the transfer saga of the window so far. Chelsea hijacked Arsenal's move for Mikhailo Mudrik and signed the player for a deal worth £88 million. Uh, let's now speak to the Shakhtar Donetsk CEO Sergei Palkin to get more on why he moved to Stamford Bridge. Sergei, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us today. This was the biggest transfer in Ukrainian football history and Chelsea's record. How does it feel to be part of that? First of all, you know, we are proud for Mudrik. We are proud for our club. We are proud for Ukrainian football. Because, you know, uh, for us it's quite symbolic because uh, Mudrik became, you know, like uh, ambassador of Ukraine in England, ambassador of Ukrainian football in England. And uh, you know that owners of uh, Chelsea, American, and uh, Mudrik move to England. And you know that uh, USA and England, uh, the biggest supporters, you know, of Ukraine in our war. Therefore, this kind of triangle, you say, England and um, Ukraine, you know, it's very, very symbolic for us. And we are proud that we completed this deal. Yeah, we certainly all welcome him here, that's uh, for sure. Uh, this transfer saga, though, between these two clubs, rival clubs, I mean, it's been the most exciting one of, of the transfer window. I mean, talk to us about those final days of negotiations. What was that like? You know, uh, on Thursday this week, uh, I mean, last, last week, we had the last meeting with Arsenal. Uh, they gave me a final proposal, and uh, I discussed this issue with the director of Arsenal, and... You know, I said that, you know, figures was uh, the same like Chelsea offered, it's uh, 100 million euro, but, uh, you know, structure of payment, structure of bonuses was com quite complicated. And I told, informed Arsenal, it would be very hard to close this kind of deal, you know, almost impossible. Therefore, and the next day when I uh, flew to uh, Antalya, where our team now located, I talked with uh, Chelsea and uh, they said they would like to come directly to Antalya and close deal. So they arrived on, on uh, Saturday, we stay all together the whole day and we closed this deal. Mm -hmm. This is in short, let's say. Yeah, so you had a very, very long day with Chelsea. They gave you a lot of their time and outlined uh, their plans, I'm guessing, for the future of the player as well. I mean, it did seem though, Michaelo, uh, wanted to go to Arsenal, didn't it? Chelsea, as you were saying, just, just simply more willing to pay your valuation. Do you think that's how it was? You know, maybe my, my it uh, looked like this one, but uh, in reality, the story was like uh, fallen because you know that Arsenal conducted our player almost one and a half, two months ago. I mean, long, uh, long time before they contact, uh, contacted us. And all this time, you know, Arteta called him, uh, sport director of Arsenal called him, Zinchenko called him, and uh, you know, they go in, inside of uh, mind of player, you know, and sometimes it uh, seems that, you know, he wanted to go to Arsenal and there was some kind of information, you know, in media and etc., etc. But uh, uh, in the same time, Chelsea, they just uh, called me uh, at the end of uh, December and asked, is it possible to contact player? And I said, OK, uh, you can contact. I connected them and actually they communicated just one week, you know, and uh, they contacted, they agreed financial conditions with him, his agents, and uh, everything. And uh, that's it, you know. And, uh, you know, because uh, Arsenal contact him, contacted him a long time, it seemed like uh, Mudrik wanted to, to, to Arsenal only, you know. So uh, that was Chelsea expressing their interest, you said, sort of late December. I mean, when did it all begin with, with knowing that, that, that the player was going to be heading to, to England and with which club? Because Brentford were interested first in the summer, uh, weren't they? And then when did Arsenal then suddenly become involved? When were you aware of that? You know, Brentford actually, uh, straight after war started, you know, it was maybe uh, in one month after war started, uh, Brentford contacted us and we started to talk about uh, Mudrik. And they really wanted to close this deal uh, and uh, they couldn't uh, settle to co close it just because of some reasons. But is this reasons coming not from our side, not from club, it's, uh, you know, from player side and uh, agent side and uh, that's it, you know. Uh, were you happy with how um, Arsenal approached you and what you knew about what was being discussed before it became official and how Chelsea approached you as, as well? You know, uh, I talked with Arsenal many times about this situation because actually it's not uh, 
uh, you know, uh, it's not maybe polite, you know, to contact a uh, player before contacting club, you know. But in any case, you know, I had no, uh, I'm not trying, bla I'm not uh, blaming, you know, Arsenal, you know, they did uh, quite good, you know, they did, uh, I mean, I mean, we, we negotiated in a professional way. I'm not, I'm not trying, you know, to, 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 you know, to blame them. But uh, Chelsea did uh, also very good in a, in a professional way. They contacted us first, you know, after they contacted the player, you know, and they were very, very professional in negotiations, you know, and uh, they were open. And for us, it's, you know, uh, you know, it's very welcome, you know, and it's a very, very pleasure to, to see this, you know. Yeah, so if you were at all uh, slightly unhappy about, you know, Arsenal approaching Mudrick before negotiations with the club, Arsenal, they just want to let you know, they're not actually publicly commenting on, on any of that. So we're told they are comfortable with how they conducted themselves in the deal. Essentially, it's Chelsea who got the man. I mean, how good can he become? What sort of talent is he? We've heard from Roberto De Zerbi, his former manager, believing he actually can go on and win the Ballon d'Or. You know, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Roberto De Zerbi because actually he, uh, let's say, put him uh, on a level where, where is him now, you know, he uh, launched him because many coaches before tried to try to uh, train uh, with, you know, with uh, Mudrik and uh, trying to give, get, give, give him a chance and etc, etc, but uh, they couldn't sell, settle to find, let's say, common language and when Roberto arrived to our club, first question he asked, you know, where is Mudrik and can I call, uh, call, uh, can I call uh, him? And the first player whom he called, it was Mudrik, because he, at that time already, he felt that this guy will arrive to big, big level. And I'm sure that, uh, and when we actually discuss with Chelsea, you know, in, on Saturday, when we finalize, uh, this, uh, finalize this deal, you know, that I believe 100% that you can sell him in the future uh, much, much expensive than uh, you, you, you buying from us. And I mean, it's, it will be your side and your decision to sell him or not, but definitely he will, he will cost in the future much, much uh, more than now. So you have big expectations for him. What, what do you think Chelsea can do with him in, in their team? What do you think they can achieve? They must have outlined some of their future plans as well because Arsenal in a much better position in the league, probably guaranteed Champions League football as well next season. Chelsea, not so. You know, what I can tell, because when, I stay, when we stay, you know, a long day, you know, with Chelsea, when they explain their project, I like it very much because everybody understands when... Uh, uh, owners of club changing, you know, you change a lot inside of, of club. It's natural, it's normal. And when you're changing, yes, uh, it's uh, you have effect on the sport results of club. And But it's temporary. I believe that next season it will be completely different uh, Chelsea. And they're trying to build one of the best uh, club in the world. And I'm sure that they will do it. You know, they, they're very, very ambitious. And uh, I believe that Mudrik will bring them a lot of titles. And also as well, to put into context, I mean, this has obviously happened whilst the war is still ongoing in Ukraine. Your club president announced more than £20 million of support to Ukrainian troops. What made him decide to do that? You know, first of all, uh, last week it was uh, two major, you know, events. Uh, first one, it's uh, Mudrik, I mean, transfer of Mudrik. Second one, that our president launched this project to help uh, to defenders of Mariupol, to um, to help you know their families, and uh, for us it's very important because you know it's help. It's uh, above uh, of all businesses. Uh, it's our values, and we are proud of this project, and uh, we are proud that President you know launched this project. In any case, uh, uh, before this project, he already donated more than 100 million. Uh, dollars uh, to help Ukrainian people, Ukrainian army, you know, and this uh, project is like separate, uh, let's say separate uh, uh, idea, separate uh, fund, and uh, he's donated 25 million uh, to help, uh, you know, defenders of Mariupol. For us, it's a big, big event, therefore we announced about it, you know, uh, last week. Yeah. And, and the money as well from, from the Mudrik deal, also hugely important for your club to be able to survive. Uh, you've been involved in this dispute with FIFA, and this is over their ruling to allow foreign players to leave the club temporarily. I mean, what's the latest with this case? 
You know, situation is fallen. You know, uh, CAS rejected uh, our um, claim against FIFA, and uh, you know, uh, next uh, steps will go first of all to uh, European Commission because FIFA breaking completely anti-monopoly uh, legislation of Europe, and will go to federal court of uh, Swiss because you know FIFA created very interesting system now. You know. Uh, and this system uh, goes in a way when you cannot, uh, when you're trying to sue against FIFA, you will never win. Because, uh, you know, uh, when you're trying to uh, select uh, uh, arbitrators, you know, one, uh, one arbitrator you are selecting from outside, one arbitrator from FIFA, but president of panel, also almost, uh, you know, uh, appointed by FIFA, because FIFA has huge uh, influence on casino. And, uh, I, I believe that we need to do everything to change this uh, rule, to change this situation, because we are living in a democratic world and everybody should have the same level against law, you know, and because uh, in this situation, FIFA, you know, can do whatever they want and nobody can be protected against FIFA. And we need to change this. Yeah, absolutely. It's just another battle that you shouldn't have to really be fighting right now. It's been a real pleasure uh, to uh, speak to you. Stay safe. Thank you very much indeed. Our Ukrainian director, though, she's an, she's an Arsenal fan here, so <laughs> she's having a little, a little chuckle at me in the ear right now. But, yeah, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Thank you.